to all the audience today i am delighted to have a very eminent personality in front of me okay so sir is dr pinaki mukopadhyay sir is an eminent nephrologist and also a transplant physician sir is a hod of nrs medical college and hospital kolkata so sir thanks for coming on this platform and sir as you know that today a uh, lots of the patient in the young age getting a cardiac arrest in the gym so they are not very much of having a knowledge what kind of exercises they have to do to prevent the cardiac arrest and also into the nephrology parts sir can i have a small opinion of you on this regards yeah uh, good morning everybody because uh, uh, this is a very burning questions because to uh, keep our kidney healthy even in the uh, for the cardiovascular protection exercise is mandatory but the problem is that uh, many of us don't know how much exercise i have to do in what fashion I have to do how long you have to do how it will be monitored uh, with the cardiac issues and the other issues because sh some patient may have some uh, orthopedic problem some patient may have insufficient ins incipient heart problem or after these things sometime obesity is one concern they want to decrease the weight uh, rapidly so all of the issues basically important for us so when of the uh, young generation actually uh, to uh, get this physique is a muscle mass so they take the many uh, things like some food supplement some creatinine just the building the mass and every protein and all of the aspect is basically the detrimental of the kidney health so one should uh, guided by the uh, trainer proper trainer proper training he will guide you the what of the exercise is suitable for his health one second important things what are the patterns and what of the time how long they will allow to particular exercise and third important thing is that regarding the food supplement so don't be so much uh, lucrative uh, just to get the your body or mus muscle mass in a very this is a long process so if you do the yoga or uh, or something else a continuous process is much better rather than do improvement in our uh, physics uh, uh, for the get the your six pack in our body muscle it will be detrimental for health and another issue that is we have came across uh, many of us many patients have taking the uh, some uh, gym Uh, taking the lift of uh, weight, heavy weight, and then after this heavy weight, they have some hematuria. So there is called some uh, rhabdomyolysis. Is there some other features? Uh, now is coming in our practice that is called uh, AKI uh, following uh, exercise. Though th there is a new entity is coming in the for the uh, long uh, uh, runner, long uh, long distance runner, or some swimmer or sprinter. So in that case, basically the Uh, oxygen uh, uh, product and all these things is being uh, utilized massively. So there is a muscle uh, necrosis is there, and that some product ultimately lead to some AKI. So whatever the things, I am not going into the very uh, uh, details of it. But the thing is that the exercise is required to keep our health healthy, but it need to be monitored in a the expert uh, trainer. He should guide you. how much how long how far and what are the fashion and each session is duration uh, is there he we definitely guide you to keep your kidney healthy absolutely sir and sir as you know that normally in day to day life all the normal person have a perception that we if we drink lots of amount of water on a daily basis we will keep our kidney healthy but it is not true so i just wanted to have your opinion how much of daily amount of water a person can consume so that their kidney will be healthy sir yeah this is a another excellent questions because there is a common myth that is if you take uh, water uh, abundant water definitely it is worst uh, out the kidney and definitely kidney will be healthy even this is a common practice in the many people even in the elderly people even in the young age and but it is not quite true why because uh, you have to take the optimal amount of water what is the optimal that is the water which is required to just make your body uh, healthy that is around 2.5 to 3 liter per day in a normal person that is to make a adequate urine that is around 1.5 liter but the problem is that patient is already uh, the having a kidney disease or already the incipient heart disease or some cardiovascular problem so if he take much more water that will lead to the extra burden of the heart and also the extra burden of the kidney to make it urine so in a compromised kidney 
if you take the much more water, that may lead to the pulmonary edema, that may lead to the shortness of breath, and they will lead to further deterioration of the kidney rather than any uh, doing any help. Second uh, question comes, the patient who, uh, who is uh, on dialysis, how much fluid will you take? The patient is not on dialysis, how much fluid will you take? And the normal person, how much fluid will you take? For the normal person, that is a uh, 2.5 to 3.5 liter per day is a uh, good enough to maintain is the kidney health. For the patient having a kidney disease in a stage one, stage two, that is called the uh, early kidney disease, that be 1.5 to 2.5 is good enough. But when the uh, it is a progressed kidney disease, that is a uh, GFR is declined uh, less than 30, uh, they should uh, keep uh, remaining this within a 1.5 liter uh, according to health. But this is this depend upon the exercise as well. The patient, uh, the person who is actually doing the traffic police, the patient is actually doing in the cultivation and with actually some uh, the postman. So the amount of the weight may not be the same because it depends upon the profession, depends upon the actually exposure of the uh, uh, heat and there is some also a lot of sweating. So considering all the profession and the exposure and the sweating and the underlying disease, you have to calculate the uh, water. And again, there is some uh, problem like a stone disease. Sometimes in the stone disease, it's also the kidney problem, but that requires much more uh, water uh, for some other reasons. Uh, so maybe a small stone can be uh, came out. So all the things, depending upon the patient's uh, polio, patient health status, underlying disease, or profession, and the actually. So it is a, the, the width is not the same. That is uh, much more fluid with a good, uh, the better kidney. So you have to maybe optimize according to the situation. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. And sir, just last question for all the doctors. Sir, as you know that right now, uncontrolled hypertension is very critical for this and in India. So it's like an epidemic in our country. So uh, getting the blood pressure control is very challenging for the doctors also. So uh, nowadays, more and more calcium channels, newer generation calcium channel blockers are coming. In your, your opinion or key insights on AZDP in, in controlling the blood pressure and managing the uncontrolled hypertension, sir? Yeah, uh, because uh, last uh, uh, 5 to 10 years, if you see, uh, there are a lot of uh, calcium channels coming in the market starting from the amlodipin. That time, the L-type channel blocker was there and this definitely it is a very potent drug and uh, we have used clinically for a long time. But after that, uh, there are some modifications like the N-channel blocker, the silidipin uh, came, then benedipin came. Uh, then uh, with this advance of this, all these things, though it is now uh, the recent one because uh, this T-channel blocker was uh, actually discovered uh, five years back, but it was not being so, so much uh, given to the market. Uh, what is the beauty of the, uh, there is a T blocker is, in addition to the channel, it has an uh, the additional aldosterone receptor blocker. So, what is the beauty of these uh, things is that, in addition of the aldosterone, it is uh, elevate the aldosterone axis, RS blockade, as well as it can uh, alter the apoptosis, that is endovascular changes, and also the cardiac remodeling. That is the another advantage of the T receptor blocker. But regarding the uh, anti-hypertensive issue, is there, though it is a three type blocker, that is, you block the L channel, it is a N channel, as well as the T channel. So, it is also uh, is a potent antihypertensive drug, but sometimes in our practice also, because we have to treat very refractory hypertension, then sometimes we have to uh, use much more, uh, uh, there is dose. That is also issue, but uh, definitely it has an additional event uh, in the terms of uh, reducing the proteinuria, maintaining the optimal blood pressure, as well as some antioxidant and the antioxidant effect. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving this your valuable key insight for our all the normal person, also the practicing doctors. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you.